You've also said that you don't uh, trust people who've never seen their own butthole because they are liars. Yeah. Um, so liars. Can you elaborate on that? So many men at going to a room, if you're in a, like a new place, just ask. Like if you feel comfortable, be like, like men, have you ever seen your own butthole? If, they say, <laughs> if you feel comfortable. Yeah. Like, if you go to a new place and you feel comfortable. So yeah. If you're, you know, like. Yeah. Just ask them, have you seen your own butthole? If they say no. That's such bullshit. Who's never seen their own butthole? Then you know they're a liar and you know you can't trust them. You know you uh, can't trust them as far as you can throw them. So I, okay, so aligned with that, I had a boyfriend who swore to me that he'd never tasted his own cum. And bullshit. I did not believe that. That's that bullshit. I did not believe. He's a liar. He's That's embarrassed what I said. about his sex life. Why are we embarrassed about yeah, sex? Yeah, I was like, why would you not want, like, if you're going to make another girl swallow your cum, don't you think that you should have an idea what it tastes like? I, I'm always tasting myself and it's, before before I'm with somebody. It's yeah. respect. And I'm it's just, like making lasagna and not tasting it or something. Yeah. Like, like for the first time and then you serve it to like, people like or something like right that, you know you have to taste before he is you get yeah i did i did honestly believe that he was a liar and it was so funny too because he was like of course i haven't like and i could tell from his reaction that he was worried that i was like accusing him of being gay <laughs> because he'd, he like traces his, you know what i mean you know yeah. some guys are so afraid to be accused of being like yeah gay like they're so fucking homophobic they're like i don't you yeah. know i've never tasted my own cum like what am i gay and it's like no, I didn't ask if you tasted other men's cum. Yeah. Like, I asked if you tasted your own, which comes Obviously. out of your penis, like, literally once a day because men <laughs> masturbate all the fucking time. Yeah. Like, okay, if you masturbate once a day, like most men, that's 365 days a year times, like, you know, however old you are from the day that you started masturbating, which was probably in your, like, fucking mid-teens, right? Mm -hmm. Not once, not once you tasted your cum. I don't. That's it's bullshit. it's bullshit. Yeah, it's all bullshit. I don't even remember a time in my life where I didn't know what my vagina tasted like. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I've just always known. I feel like yeah, it's just something that you check. It's just personal hygiene. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's like you know how like monkeys like pick things off their body. Yeah. I feel like it's like they like you should be smell smelling. <laughs> like it should be like your natural instinct. Yeah. You know. You want to like check everything's okay down there. Yeah. Because exactly. you know we have different days our ph level changes we you know have 100%. periods and you know it's not it's not always the same mm -hmm. every day is a different day for your vagina it's oh whenever i tell like my friends like who aren't in the industry about like boric acid I, i'll straight up be like oh if you have, find a day where you taste a little off blah, blah blah i'll just straight up say it like if you find a day where you taste off i don't even ask them like do you taste yourself i'll just be like i'll just assume that they do you know mm -hmm. and i'll be like use this you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's interesting how when you get into the adult industry and you start like having sex for a living, how comfortable you become about talking about hygiene and yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Like girls definitely kind of swap stories and educate each other on yeah. like the best ways to keep yourself clean and prevent yeast infections and stuff like that, which is just like a lovely like sisterhood. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's so supportive. It's for the most part. It's very yeah. supportive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any onset anal horror stories no i don't do anal on set like with anybody i just do okay, it so like you prefer my, it but then you it's you, my personal life thing. in your personal yeah. life but you keep it from everybody else yeah well how do we know how do we know if you like anal if you don't if we don't see it well i could be a big fat liar but you could be a big fat liar but who knows? just like those fucking paleontologists <laughs> i know if lie. you're not showing us on camera that you I like do anal, show on camera though i just don't i only do it with like couple like there's really i did it more in Mich michigan because mm -hmm. where i had people i worked with where i was really comfortable with mm -hmm. um but i do it with people i'm comfortable with and that's very small select people um so you've only done it like for your only fans is what you're saying yeah i don't do it professionally because right. i don't want to poop on anybody and be that girl who pooped on somebody you know I mean, and everybody has like, I mean, yeah, they, like, like, that's they thing. don't know, but like, it they, happens a lot. It does happen. And like, but people, everyone takes it. Look, if you're somebody who works on porn and somebody has a poop accident and you don't take that shit in stride, then you're not a professional. Like we've yeah. all seen it. Like nobody freaks out. It's not that big. But I just, I'm not ready yet. And I'm sure I'll get there soon because yeah. I'm a very quick adapter, you mm -hmm. know, like to take things on it's just like more of a, a nerve thing yeah i one time tried to douche my ass before an anal scene mm. yeah no i had to cancel that scene 
I've never done that. What happened? <laughs> you know, like people give themselves enemas. Yeah, I know. Th- I know. That's what I'm thinking. Because I'm like, okay, the enema and douche, they're both liquid. But obviously, they're different kinds of liquids. So like, what Wait, why the- are they different liquids? I don't know. I just assumed they were. I always pour the liquid. I just pour the liquid out of the douche and I refill the douche. With water. Yeah. But when you do an Is enema. enema not water? Is that why my butt hurts so fucking bad when I gave so- myself an oh. anal douche? I don't know. I literally, you know that feeling when you like have the runs and you're like, I'm sick. Like yeah. you start sweating. Yeah. That's what happened the second I squeezed the bottle into my butt. But did you empty out the bottle and put in water? Yeah. And so I just, wasn't. I, I got so sick. I was like. <sighs> so because in douche, it's like a vinegar solution, right? Like a very some, some mild them, yeah. d- vinegar solution. So even though you took the water out, there might have been some vinegar residue left no no this was just a, a matter of getting water in my butt i found out if i get water in my butt it makes me feel like i have to throw up huh. <laughs> so you've never had a colonic like a one by a doctor yeah no, no. <laughs> well not one by anybody else either but yeah well <laughs> colonics are they're intense yeah that's it's like the most uncomfortable 45 minutes of your life no, I feel great after. My brother used to have to drink all that shit to get his intestines cleared out mm. and all that stuff. But no, I've never had anything like that. So, did you ever try an actual enema, or did you only no, try the douche I just as tried an the enema? Douche, like, and, and then, you had a bad experience. Yeah, and then it got water got trapped up there too. So later yeah, on, later on, I was walking, and it all of a sudden just. Was, like my water broke. Oh no! I what was is your like, butt water. my butt water broke. I was like, "What is this bullshit?" I go, so I'm, I go tell everybody now, don't douche your ass before a scene. Oh no! Yeah, Holy where crap. were you? I was at my house. I canceled. Okay, the good. Scene. You were okay. I canceled the scene okay. right away. Like, like the, the, the second gross, I went, you weren't like the grocery store. No, I think I stayed home. I felt like I had the flu. I was so. I was like, this is horrible. Wow, it's, like, it's something like. You know how like when you touch your the mm-hmm. little dangly thing makes you feel like you got a gag? Mm-hmm. I have that mm-hmm. in my butt. Yeah. You have a gag reflex in your butt. <laughs> I do. Yeah, you love anal. That's so interesting. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> we, I keep just being, I'm a hypocrite all over this podcast today. I don't know what's going on. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.